Welcome to our worship experience. No matter what you've experienced this week, we now have the opportunity to participate in worship. Lay down those stresses and let's focus on our loving God. Jeff's going to start us with a prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our most merciful God, we come before you thanking you very much for this opportunity to get together with each other digitally. Lord, we ask a blessing on the speaking, especially on the hearing, that we will listen through a filter of God's love to what is spoken, and that we speak through God's love. Each of us will get from the message and from our interaction with each other what we mean. Lord, we thank you so much for the blessings you've given us. And Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God touches my heart in many ways. It amazes me how I'll hear just the right song to soothe or inspire my heart. In John 14, 1, Jesus told the disciples to trust him. I like the amplified version. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. Believe confidently in God and trust in Him. Have faith. Hold on to it. Keep it going. And believe also in me. There is a peace, a sweetness that comes from trusting in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. your offering of time in sharing worship with us. Take some time to reflect on all God's blessings. It's easy to take for granted the basic life support God gives us in the earth, sun, moon, and basic gravity. Consider the gift of natural beauty. You might want to start a blessing list to remind you of all the ways He cares for you. Your response to God's love is an act of love toward God an intimate offering to Him. For those of you who choose to give financially as an offering, thank you. We take your offering to share the good news of Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit seriously. May you be blessed in your giving. 
Father in heaven, we know that every prayer your people brings before you is answered. Sometimes not in the way we'd like it to be, but help us to always remember to keep in mind that your ways are always above our ways. We pray for healing. We would like it to see it in this life. Sometimes it's given that way and sometimes it's not until the next life. But our prayers are always answered. We pray for good weather and other things that trouble us in this world. And we know that those prayers are always answered. Perhaps not the way we would like them to see, but always in what's best for our needs at the time. We thank you, Father, that you do hear everything we bring before you. And we know sometimes that hard times are allowed when we forget to appreciate the good times. But it's all given for our betterment and our need to be closer to you. We just ask now that you do look down upon us and hear everything that our, we bring before you, whether it be about health, whether it be about just the world in general. And do help us to remember always that your ways are higher than ours, and you do always answer our prayers in the way that you see best at this time. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10 from the English Standard Version. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The Bible is full of verses about God being a place where we can and should turn. We gain confidence in who God is from being in his word. When the storms of life hit, stay close to God and be confident of God, like David described in the Passion Translation, Psalms 91, verse 1 through 2. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold that shelters me, the only God for me and my great confidence. He, God, is our hiding place. You
We now come to the message portion of our service. It is uh, a time that we can listen to what God has instructed or given us to listen to and something we can reflect on. If you would join me in prayer. Loving God, as we take the time to roll over and meditate and think about what you have prepared for us. And God, certainly we do ask that this message is what you have desired to share with us. Use my voice as you see fit. Change the words, whatever you desire. Certainly, God, that we would all hear what you have for us. And we thank you for this time and special time with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's message, the title is, Are You Confident? And you may think about that for a moment. And I want to give a definition of confident. Full of conviction. So are you full of conviction when you approach and do things? Having or showing assurance. That you have a strong sense of assurance when you do things. Or the final definition listed is self-reliance. Do you rely on yourself in your confidence? We experience the temptation to resolve our problems under our own power. By taking matters into our own hands or by manipulating people or circumstances. To accomplish what we believe needs to happen. Is this a definition of your confidence, of how you approach things? In 1969, I remember a song sung by Frank Sinatra called My Way. I did it my way. It's reported that. Frank really hated that song. And if you listen to the words, and I look the lyrics up, it is something that is all about self and how I did it my way. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the ends their way is to death. We need to come to the simple realization that we are powerless. We do not have things within us, the capacity to heal, to heal ourselves, to fix things, to make things the way they need to be. Where do we put our confidence? Where do we find a source of confidence. In the Christian calendar, today is the first Sunday in the season towards Easter preparation. We will go back to the Gospel of Mark to begin this season in the Christian calendar. Remember, and I will allude to it and say it again today, Mark gives quick points, a somewhat condensed version as he moves through the gospel. Jesus appears, is baptized, starts his ministry, wrestles with the devil, calls his first disciples all in the first half of the first chapter of Mark. That's a lot of information, a lot of things happening in that first half of the first chapter. Today's text is from Mark 1, verses 9 through 15, and I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. In verse 9, we begin. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately upon coming out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. 
and immediately the Spirit brought him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with wild animals, and the angels were serving him. And now, after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Mark is relating how Jesus was preparing himself for his beginning into ministry. Do we prepare for ministry? Have you ever thought of your life as you uh, work and, and live as a Christian that you're preparing yourself as serving in ministry? In reality, we are all ministers. And I didn't say pastors, and I didn't say evangelists, but we all minister to other people. We all share what Jesus has done in our lives. Jesus' baptism was no ordinary baptism. The heavens opened. The Spirit descended like a dove, and a voice spoke. This voice was the first recording or record in the Bible of Jesus as a human being hearing the voice of the Father. Now possibly when he was in prayer or when they were alone, they conversed audibly, but there's no record of that. The record of him first as a human hearing the voice of his Father is here at his baptism. How well do you know voices? My father has been uh, has passed now. I believe this year will be 13 years. My grandfather this year will be 30 years. If I heard their voice, I would immediately know who was speaking. I would know clearly who was speaking. Jesus heard his father's voice, and he immediately knew who it was. But even more than the voice, what was he saying? What did Jesus hear? Jesus heard his father, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. What person would not want to hear this? It makes all the difference to hear those words. To hear a voice that you know loves you, but to hear how much and how much they care. Have you ever had someone speak to you in words that were so encouraging? Maybe as a child growing up, if you were fortunate enough to have a parent that spoke those words into you and how much they meant and how much you could hold on to those. And even now, if I could hear my dad or my grandfather speak, within their voice, I would know how much they cared for me. The Father, in saying this, was preparing Jesus. He was knowing what was coming. And immediately after his baptism, the Spirit brought him out into the wilderness, took Jesus into the wilderness. A year ago, when Laura and I were in Israel, we were in that area, and wilderness is, is a very good definition. Uh, it's still a wilderness, and I can only imagine what it would have been like over 2,000 years ago. But it, the words immediately means just that. Not sometime later, but right now. Other translations say the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. In other words, he, he immediately took and drove Jesus into the wilderness. Recognizing Jesus was fully God and fully man. But Jesus laid aside his divinity and was tempted as a human being. 
Hebrews 4 and verse 15. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but one that hath been in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. The story of his temptation. This was Jesus as a human being resisting the devil, resisting those temptations. We need a power greater than ourselves. We need a savior, a rescuer to deliver us. Jesus expressed this truth on our behalf. When he chose to honor his own humanity by depending upon his heavenly Father to care for him, in that trust or, or trial of, of being tempted by the devil, he was there as a human being relying on his Father to strengthen in him, to send the angels whatever was needed to help him defeat the devil. He did not engage his own divinity. Those angels came as part of the uh, directing of the Father to strengthen him, and his Father faithfully provided. We need to refuse to test God, choosing instead to simply trust and obey him, and walk each moment in loving obedience to him in spite of how difficult or dangerous our experiences may be at the moment. And we all find ourselves in dangerous situations that, if maybe not dangerous, but are extremely difficult. Do we rely on ourselves or do we rely on God? In this time of crisis that we live in right now in 2021, we struggle with the pandemic the accompanying financial and political stress of a complete change in our government, or the recent severe cold weather. Many are questioning God's goodness and His faithfulness. I know this week, my stepbrother who lives in Houston called me to find plumbing parts so he could repair his home, uh, frozen pipes, because there is nowhere in the Houston area he could find to buy those supplies. He reached out two states away for me to ship things to him. And he's just one of millions that are dealing with devastation. Do we look to ourselves? Do we look to God? Many are questioning how much God cares because of their, their circumstances. Have we lost our confidence in God and the, His goodness and His love for each one of us? Will we trust that Jesus has our best interests in mind? And is He still watching out for us and providing for us even in the midst of the pandemic or the financial or uh, the weather-related circumstances or maybe a health issue, is God still there? Or will we take our matters into our own hands and try to work it out ourselves? Do things my way. Have we traded in our eternal glory for the transient glories of this world. Think about your life in school or in a workplace. Have we traded eternal glory? And, and how that may play out is maybe we did that one thing which was unjust, unholy, inhumane, or unloving to inflate or achieve a position we wanted. Maybe we climbed over the top of someone physically in, in a job situation. 
we purposely maligned somebody else so that we could achieve the prize we wanted. While Jesus was in the wilderness, he faced the reality of what it meant to be truly human and to face the evil one's temptations while he was at his weakest and most vulnerable. Forty days in the wilderness, he was there combating the enemy as a human being, relying solely on his Father and his provisions for him. In verse 13 of Mark 1, And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. So he wasn't just subject to the, to the enemy, just the sheer elements of nature. And where that is, is a very arid, dry area. And whatever animals there would have been looking for food. While in college, I was on a backpacking uh, expedition, and we were in Big Bend National Park, a high desert. And we were there in January, and we were on a compass run. The instructor gave us coordinates and sent us off with a compass. One of the most frightening experiences is going down the trail following these coordinates and running full bore into a javelina, a wild javelina who could kill you in a moment, and they are fast. We don't know what elements that Jesus had to deal with, with the wild animals. But Jesus went into the wilderness full of confidence. He had just heard the voice of his father confirming his identity and affirming his father's love. I wonder how many times in those 40 days did he remember his father's voice and remember his love that was affected and how much he was pleased with Jesus. We also know the Spirit led him into the wilderness and the Spirit never leaves or forsakes us. Yes, the Spirit took him there, but he never left him. We go with the confidence that Jesus is the one to whom he has been given all authority and power on heaven and earth. We go in with the assurance that he will always be with us. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is a reference you can look at. What was Jesus doing in the wilderness? He was spending time with his Abba, his daddy. When you are really challenged, you want to have and be close to that entity that, that loves you and please, is so proud of you. And I'm, I can't imagine the time that he reflected on his father. He was also preparing for his ministry, for what he was about to come out of the wilderness into. And he was defeating the enemy. If Je Jesus failed in this temptation, then all bets are off. We don't have a future. But Jesus did not fail. He resisted the temptation of the enemy. Have you seen that, it, that in your life? Jesus steps into your story. He doesn't destroy it or starts it over. He rewrites your story. When we, are, when we know our true identity, a beloved child of God, and I'm here to tell you that's exactly who you are, a beloved child of God. And we know that God has us in his hands. He, we are held right in his hands. And we can face our own wilderness experiences in full confidence 
that God is always in control. We can face temptation with the faith of Jesus Christ. Jesus tended to buy heavenly power through his ordeal. That, that was how he was tended, the, the power from heaven held him close. He is cared for and watched over and is never out of his father's eye. And you are never out of the eyes of God, of Jesus Christ, of the Father. You are full born right in front of them all the time. I want to point out an interesting thing. Jesus is also not taken out of the situation. He's left in that temptation, ministered to, given power to with, withstand the temptation, but he's not removed from the temptation. Much like we are in our circumstances, we ask for God to intervene. In our mind, many times it's, get me out of this situation. Take me away from this. Relieve me of this burden. Many times we're left in that, but we're given the strength to endure and be a victor in that situation. Like Jesus, we are never alone in the desert. We may be surrounded by wild animals at times, but we are also ministered to by angels letting us know that God is always with us. The Holy Spirit is right there with us, ministering to us as God. Verse 14 from Mark 1. Now, after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Once John's ministry ended, Jesus' ministry began. The Spirit led him into the ministry to prepare, prepare him for ministry. He went in full confidence and assurance. He came out with mission and purpose. Draw near to God as he draws near to us. Resist the evil one as Christ resisted him, and rest in God's faithfulness, grace, and loving care. Every day, I pray that you look to Jesus to provide the answer. He knows what your day is going to entail. He knows what difficulties or challenges may come your way. When those do, reach out to him. He loves you, and he will provide the correct answer to get you through those situations. Today's message was where is the confidence? We learned where Jesus put his confidence in. He heard the voice of his father speaking to him, and it carried him into the wilderness. It helped him withstand the difficulty of combating with the, the devil, with the enemy. His confidence was in his Father. Where is our confidence? Where is mine? Where is your confidence? Do we look to Jesus to lead us and to be with us through the Holy Spirit and the love of the Father? Is that where we receive our confidence in facing difficult times? The lesson of Mark 1 points very clearly our confidence needs to be in Jesus. As we move to the last portion of today's service, the opportunity to share in Christ's body, in symbol, through the bread and the fruit of the vine. He provided everything for us. The sacrament called the Lord's Supper, has many other names, Holy Communion, Eucharist, Divine Liturgy, the breaking of the bread. But by whatever name it is called, 
It is a deeply Trinitarian celebration. In the whole action of the Lord's Supper, thanksgiving is given to God through Jesus Christ in the Spirit. Jesus gave us bread that represented his body. And as we look at this and we break it, as his body was broken for us, let's pause and thank God. Loving God, as you have given us so many gifts and you are right there loving us in our life every moment of every day we thank you for this bread of jesus christ representing his body that he allowed to be broken and you allowed him to endure for us to give us life we thank you and we ask that you would bless it in jesus name take and eat He also had a cup, and we are looking in rep the fruit of the vine, the, the wine, representing Christ's blood that was poured out, that was shed for us. Loving God, we once again come to your throne. We thank you for Jesus and his willingness to suffer and to die. And we thank you for his blood that was spilled for us to give us a future. We thank you and we ask that you would bless in Jesus' name. Take and drink. We are glad that you joined us today, that you made the decision to be a part of our worship service. If you want to contact us to reach out to us, we can be reached at gcderby.org or on our Facebook page at Grace Communion Derby. Thank you, loving God, for our lives, for your protection, for your constant love for us. Please watch over us today and this week that we may come back and return and be a part of a worship service with you again next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Our weekly program is available on our website and Facebook page. It can also be emailed to you. The program has links to children's Bible resources, praise songs to enrich your worship experience, as well as when our Bible study groups meet. Grace Communion Derby's vision is for God's love for all to be experienced and shared. We desire to provide welcoming environments to learn and live the gospel the good news available in Jesus Christ. We'd love to have you come back and worship with us next week.